Do you think it was a good idea to quit college and try and build a business? Um... On my 18th birthday, I quit college to try and build a business, thanks to this guy. Hi guys, Tim Ferriss here. It's the perfect time to re-examine your priorities. What we most fear doing, very often exactly what we most need to do. Cheap, fast experiments. For me, that's the name of the game. Try it. At the time, I was so convinced this was the right thing to do, it almost felt like I'd been brainwashed. What is a four hour work week like? How do you do the that? The goal is to hit a big bestseller. Uh, I realized, okay, I can, I can do this. Tim and all the other entrepreneurship gurus were serving up the Kool-Aid in the form of blog posts, podcasts, and books, and I was chugging it down as fast as I could. But looking back, I wanted to figure out what actually led me to the point to make that decision, and if it was a good decision. And finally, I'm gonna to touch on what I would do differently if I was starting again today. And luckily in the process of making this video, I've been able to find some old journals I was keeping at the time. And from these journals, I've been able to pinpoint the three lessons I learned that led me to make the leap. And honestly, these could be helpful for anyone wanting to start a business, not just for people who want to quit college. But first, let me give you some context real quick. I was a typical kid. I grew up in a small town in North Yorkshire in the UK. I wasn't that cliche entrepreneurial kid selling sweets behind the bike shed at the school. And honestly, I didn't think much about business. I hated school, but did okay. And all I cared about was playing sports and video games. I had no idea what I wanted to do when I grew up, so honestly, I just tried to avoid thinking about it. That was until I read The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. I know, very cliche. But as soon as I realized there was another path besides going to school, college, university, and getting a corporate office job, I completely checked out. I started skipping classes to read books and listen to podcasts, and I was really just immersing myself in as much business and self-development as I possibly could. Okay, so this first lesson took me the longest time to learn, but has the potential to drastically change the way you approach your career and really how you approach your life. See, as a kid, I did not deal well with moderation. I've always had this all or nothing mentality. Whenever I get into something, I become completely obsessed with it and try to get really, really good. When I was a kid that was completing video games within a couple days, spending way too long deconstructing football games, or just playing sports for an obscene amount of time. And I used to think that this type of behavior was a bad thing, that not being well balanced was a fault. And I think it's just because in school, everything is about becoming well balanced. You're taught a range of subjects, but you're also expected to care equally about all of them. Even if you look at general society, the consensus is that you should be a well-balanced person, that you should watch the news, you should have an opinion about everything, and care about the most mundane, inconsequential things that don't impact your day-to-day -day life, because that's what everyone does, right? But I noticed that when you do this, you kind of become mediocre because everyone has a limited amount of attention. You can't care about and do everything, and you definitely can't do everything well. So you have to figure out what you do care about and what you don't care about. And then you have to actively avoid those things that you don't care about. At the time of making this decision, I wrote this in my journal. I'm noticing that the people who live interesting lives just follow what they're curious about. They don't care what other people think and they find a way to make it work. They don't conform to society's rules, they just pick and choose what works best for them. And this was a turning point where I learned that following obsession was not a bad thing. And in fact, it was an advantage. If you are feeling pulled towards something, then it's okay to go all in on it. Yeah, I'm gonna go all in because I don't think you got the space. And since then, I've realized that society rewards the outliers, the unique one of one, way more than it does the general population. The people who don't care about looking a certain way or living a life that is quote unquote normal. So that first lesson I internalized was to just follow obsession and do things that you're curious about. And when you do this, you'll find that you actually have more energy. And because of that, you'll have this competitive advantage that other people just cannot compete with. Now, the second thing is one of the most powerful tools I still use regularly today, and that is to set anti-goals. I've always struggled to set goals because it feels like it's this really big thing. This was especially the case when I was younger and I didn't really know what I wanted to achieve. There was this vague larger goal of freedom, potentially building my own business and doing my own thing, but nothing actionable and nothing conquering. That was until I stumbled upon this article from Andrew Wilkinson in 2017 called The Power of Anti-Goals. And in this article, Andrew talks about the concept of setting goals based on the things that you want to avoid. So essentially using inversion on the goal setting process. So instead of just making making up the things that you want to achieve, you go back over previous experiences and find the things that you don't like, the things that you want to avoid. So when you think about your ideal day, what kind of things will you not be doing? These then become your anti-goals. So the goal is to avoid the things that you don't like. And the reason this is so powerful is, let's say you hit your wildest goals, that's great. 
But is it really that impressive to hit those goals if you spend all of your time miserable because you're just doing things that you don't like? That's why I'm always way more impressed by people who are successful, but they do it on their own terms. So when you picture your perfect day, what is not happening? For me, that was commuting to a job, being in endless meetings, doing repetitive, boring work, and having to be told what to do by people that I don't like. And the great thing about doing this exercise is that when it becomes clear the things that you don't want, the things that you do want become very obvious. Because let's say that I don't want to commute or I don't want a boss, well then it's pretty obvious that I need to do my own thing that can be done remotely. So now whenever I'm making new decisions, I just run everything through my anti-goals. I think about the things that I want to avoid and I think about what this new opportunity will bring. And this framework has been incredibly helpful for me to make better decisions over a longer period of time. So this third lesson is that success is autonomy. See, when most people think about success, they see status, fame, and that kind of thing. But I actually think at a fundamental level, most people just want autonomy. They want the ability to decide how they spend their time and attention. And sure, for some people that might be chasing money and status, but even then, I think they'd be much happier to do that with autonomy and freedom than it would be to do that as an employee who had no leverage, had to constantly answer to a boss, and really didn't have the ability to decide how they spent their time. And when I realized this, I wrote, I think I'm starting to realize that what I want is freedom. I want to have control over how I spend my time and that's what I need to figure out first. My first business only needs to help me become my own boss. Don't put too much pressure on it. And at that point, two things became clear. The first was that I always wanted to do something where I controlled my own schedule. And the second was that that first business didn't have to be this grand startup which kind of revolutionized the world. It just had to be something that gave me future opportunities and allowed me to live the kind of lifestyle I wanted to live. Before that moment, I'd been constantly holding myself back because I could never commit to one business idea. Nothing ever felt fully right. But when I reframed it and just focused on trying to gain autonomy and freedom, it became incredibly obvious that the first thing I should pursue was freelancing because that was the best first step to gaining autonomy and freedom. Do you think it was a good idea to quit college and try and build a business? Yeah. Why? It's definitely helped you grow more in confidence as a person and I feel like you've been pretty successful with stuff that you've built as well. At the time, what did you think? A part of me that was a bit like, well, Good luck, mate. <laughs> but, then, <laughs> but then at the same time, I definitely like believed in you as a person. You seemed very like, determined to do something else. Like you tried so many different things before you landed on what you do now. And I do think that you did figure it out quite quickly. But yeah, I think it was a good idea. And I think you've done a great job. Mate. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> So I've thought about this a lot because I often look at where I've made mistakes in the past and try to figure out how to make better decisions in future. In the beginning, there was a lot of mini meltdowns, self-doubt, and all that kind of thing that you deal with whenever you're starting something new. But the biggest mistake I made when starting a business was not finding someone to shadow or to learn from when I was getting started. If instead of just trying to figure everything out myself and I got a job for a period of time, or even if I'd shadowed like another freelancer, I think I'd have learned much quicker than I actually did. The problem in those early days is that I didn't know what I didn't know. So learning from someone else is one of the best ways to increase your rate of learning. Now, I wouldn't change my decision to drop out and try build a business because ultimately I knew I didn't want to follow the typical path. And I always find it way better to back yourself to figure it out than to kind of follow along with what everyone else is doing. Because if you start to follow along with the default modern life, then you'll easily find yourself sleepwalking into getting a job, having more responsibilities, and then everything becomes way more difficult to make that leap in future. That's why I think that anyone who is contemplating the decision to start a business should start as early as they possibly can. Even if you're much older than I was at the time, right now is a time where you're going to have the least amount of responsibilities. There's always going to be more and more excuses the older you get because you're going to have more people who rely on you, more responsibilities, less energy, and it's just going to be much more difficult to get started. So all in all, I think it was a very good decision to make. These lessons are the things that led me there, but these lessons are also the things that keep me on track while I'm building a business. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, then just drop them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. And if you're still here, then I think you might like this video.